Black Panther has most of the world at its feet. Only one country has yet to submit to Ryan Coogler's Afro-futuristic box office sensation, China. The Disney Marvel tentpole finally opens March 9th in the world's second largest film market, the last international outing for Panther following rollouts in Russia on Feb. 26 and Japan on March 1st. The film has earned $501 million stateside, putting the all-time domestic record for a superhero title, The Avengers $623.4 million, within reach. Offshore, its international tally stands at just under $400 million, Panther has performed strongly, if not quite at the same record-setting pace. Just where Black Panther lands on the all-time global box office charts will depend to a large part on China, where comparable Marvel titles have regularly earned $100 million plus. As its prowl the globe, Panther has tracked down and slain Hollywood's conventional wisdom that movies led by black casts don't sell well overseas. Following a strong $12.9 million first week in Russia, it opened way ahead of Thorpe Ragnarok and Guardians of the Galaxy in Japan with $4.2 million, while also adding to hefty totals in South Korea $36 million, and most of Southeast Asia. But before its high-stakes China bow, some analysts are still wondering if race could play a role in Panther's performance in the Middle Kingdom. Latent tensions over this question came to the four days before the film's U.S release when a Chinese-language character poster for Panther emerged online showing Chadwick Boseman's hero with his face concealed by his character's headgear. Since the U.S. version of the same poster showed Boseman both masked and unmasked, some observers naturally began to speculate that Disney might be trying to downplay the film's African origins in China because of assumptions about the local audience. The allegation proved to be false, however, Disney quickly pointed out that it had nothing to do with the poster, the image was unofficial, fan art generated during a pitching competition held by a media agency in Taiwan. But the incident highlighted the scrutiny that was sure to follow the film's rollout and reception overseas. In fact, the available evidence suggests Black Panther is on track to open much like any other Marvel superhero movie in China. One week prior to release, leading Chinese ticketing site Maoina showed the film had attracted approximately 250,000 want-to-see votes from registered users. That's a pretty good number for a Hollywood movie, says James Lee, co-founder of Beijing-based market research firm Fanning. Looking at the pre-release heat in the market right now, it looks like Black Panther will perform like a standard U.S superhero movie, but it probably won't do really huge box office unless the word of mouth turns out to be very strong, a strong performance by Black Panther in China would put it in the same range as other comparable character launch. Marvel movies in the territory, such as Guardians of the Galaxy, $86 million, Ant-Man, $105 million, and Doctor Strange, $109 million. Black Panther is a real test case, says Stan Rosen, a professor at USC who specializes in the Chinese film industry. It will be interesting to see how it's discussed in the blogs and on social media once it comes out, and whether the race of the actors is even raised as an issue, or if it's just viewed as another superhero film. I'm inclined to think it will be more of the latter, Rose and adds. But if Chinese audiences do view Black Panther mostly as just another superhero movie, the film is also unlikely to benefit from the positive marketing effect that has come with its status as a cultural milestone in the U.S., where, alongside its depth, originality and sheer entertainment value, critics and filmgoers alike have celebrated Panther for breaking new ground in terms of on-screen diversity. China's vastly different ethnic makeup from the U.S. Han Chinese comprise 91.6% of the population, and substantially different cultural attitudes toward diversity mean that this distinctly American ideal is unlikely to register much. Racism and prejudice toward people of African descent exists in Chinese society, but it is distinct in form and history from racism in the United States, for a first-person account, see here. In fact, China's engagement with both African and African-American culture, particularly pop culture, has often been inchoate and contradictory. The reality show The Rap of China, arguably China's biggest television phenomenon of 2017, brought hip-hop culture into the Chinese mainstream. The show was watched by millions on Ike Yi, a local Netflix-like streaming video service, making several of its contestants into overnight superstars. But Chinese state media soon clamped down on the movement, objecting to the low moral values of lyrics extolling drug use and womanizing. Two of The Rap of China's breakout stars were then mysteriously dropped from other reality shows. How Kendrick Lamar's critically acclaimed Black Panther soundtrack will fit into this contested milieu is anyone's guess. 
while the rap of China was dominating online, a hit action film was bringing Africa to China's multiplexes. Wolf Warrior 2 features local superstar Wu Jing as a Rambo-like figure who rescues a group of waylaid Chinese citizens, and some seemingly helpless African villagers, from an evil Western mercenary in an unnamed African nation. The film smashed Chinese box office records, earning $871 million locally, while also introducing something akin to a Chinese spin on the white savior complex, since Wolf Warrior 2 was such a hit and introduced Africa as a setting to the Chinese audience, notes Rosen, it will be interesting to see 